This week, we're talking about respect while we take a look at the story of two sisters and how they spent time with others. Come on, Amara. Hey, I'm Zeke. And I'm Amaya, and we're talking about respect, which is showing others they're important by what you say and do. You're important to me. I'm glad to hear But see, that's not enough, is it? Saying it isn't enough. I have to do something to show you're important. Okay, you could start by showing me what you planned for today. You're gonna love it. What is it? Three guesses. I need one clue. It's cold. We're going skiing? Do you even know how to ski? Uh, the only time I tried, I sprained my ankle. Well, we're not going skiing. Mm, I need another clue. <gasps> we're eating ice cream! You like ice cream, right? I love ice cream. Enough to ski on it? Hmm. Nah, I'd rather eat it. Great, I've got everything ready. This is awesome. Where's the ice cream? I haven't made it yet. Haven't made it? Doesn't that take like super long to make? You're totally worth it. Okay then, I think we better get started. Let's, Let's make, make it. it. All you need is heavy whipping cream, vanilla, and sugar. Step one, pour all the ingredients into the small bag. One cup of heavy whipping cream, One and a half teaspoons of vanilla. One tablespoon of sugar. That is not enough. I don't think so. <laughs> and now, seal the bag. Okay, but what's the salt for? I don't want salty ice cream. Okay, this is the really cool part. I mean, actually cool. So you know how you see trucks putting salt on icy roads? Yeah, I guess I thought it melts the ice or something. Nope. Salt actually lowers the melting point of ice, which takes us to step two. Step two, fill the large bag halfway with ice, then add a quarter cup of salt. Step three, place a small bag inside of the large bag. And pour more ice on top. And now we seal the large bag. Okay, but I still don't get how the salt works. Adding salt to ice when making ice cream quickly lowers the temperature of the ice, which is needed to make the ice cream solid. Without salt, the outer ice doesn't get cold enough to freeze the ice cream, and it will stay liquid. So, salt makes the ice colder while it melts. Yep, and that means the ice cream freezes faster, which makes for smaller ice crystals and fluffier ice cream. Now, we get to step five. Shake it up. As long as it takes. But I thought the salt was supposed to make it go faster. But not that fast. Okay. Want some help? No, I'm doing this for you. Okay. Can we maybe like edit this into a cool montage? I better keep shaking it then. Alright. While you do that, it's time for 
the story before the story. Today we're in Luke, the third book in the New Testament. But before Luke, in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into relationship. So at the right time, God sent a tiny baby to be born in the small town of Bethlehem, God's very own son, Jesus. When Jesus grew up, he began to travel from town to town, teaching and healing, which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, you can call me Brian. Hey Brian. One day, as Jesus was walking with his disciples, he arrived in the town of Bethany, where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Martha and her sister Mary and brother Lazarus were close friends and followers of Jesus. They knew what an honor it was for him to visit their home. Jesus, you sit right here. I know you must be starving after such a long day. Dinner will be ready soon, but here are some raisins and figs. And Mary just brought cool water from the well. Let me know if you need anything at all. It was common for men to sit at the feet of Jewish rabbis and learn from them, so Lazarus and the other men crowded around to hear Jesus speak, while Martha and Mary worked to prepare a meal for Jesus. Martha must have put every ounce of energy into cooking the best food possible. But after a while, Mary left the kitchen to come and sit down at Jesus' feet just like the men. Now, as the afternoon wore on, Martha kicked into high gear. Boy, she chopped, she roasted, she basted, she baked, she cleaned, and she decorated flying from one task to the next. And as the temperature in the kitchen whew, grew warmer, so did Martha's temper. I mean, Mary was over there with Jesus doing nothing while Martha was left to handle the entire meal on her own. Martha probably felt overwhelmed and annoyed. And at last, she couldn't keep quiet anymore. Does she think dinner is just going to magically appear on the table? Lord! Everything got quiet. Everyone stared at Martha. My sister left me to do the work by myself. Don't you care? Tell her to help me. Everyone waited to see what would happen. Would Jesus be angry with Martha for interrupting? Or would he tell Mary to give up her spot at his feet and go to the kitchen? Instead, Jesus looked at Martha with deep compassion in his eyes. Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed. Really, only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Jesus wasn't angry with Martha for working hard to make a meal for him. It was important work that had to be done. But Martha had gotten distracted from the most important way of showing love to Jesus, through her time and attention. So what did Martha do? Well, we don't actually know how Martha responded. Maybe she did sit down for a while to listen to Jesus, but we do know that later, Martha showed great faith that Jesus could heal her brother. And she was one of the first to declare that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. Well, that's good to know. I mean, I feel like Martha a lot of times with school and homework and chores, it's really hard not to worry about things not getting done if I take a break. Well, you're not alone. We can all lose track of what's really important. So, what's, what's our part in the story? Well, Martha was doing lots of good stuff for Jesus, but she missed spending time with him. So, the best way to show love for Jesus is by spending time with him first. Yeah, and there are lots of ways to do that. You can spend time with Jesus by reading scripture and talking with him about what you read. Yeah, you can pray and talk with Jesus about anything that's on your heart. You can even spend time with him by listening to worship music. Or find a quiet place and ask Jesus to be there with you. Where we spend our time shows what matters most to us. Spending time with Jesus is the most important thing. And spending time is a great way to show others that they matter too. Yeah, like when you get home from school, maybe take a couple of minutes to talk to your mom and dad about your day instead of going right into doing your homework. Or when your little sister asks you to do sidewalk chalk, you can put down your game and hang out with it. Maybe your parents want you to go visit your grandma at the retirement home. You might be tempted to grumble, but remember, 
that when you take time to listen to her stories, you show how important she really is. That's a lot to think about. It sure is. See you next time. So here's the thing. Take time to show others that they are important. Speaking of which, where's my ice cream? I finished it up and put it in the freezer. Do I get to eat it? Yeah, let's go. Mmm. This is actually not salty. <laughs> Do you feel important? Absolutely. Then my work here is done. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you, See you next, next time. time. Oh, so good. <laughs>